So I found the oil I needed, 0W20 Full Synthetic Mobile One, the high mileage stuff that gives extra protection. And they don't have a lot of filter selection at Walmart, but there is a, I don't, well, new to me, Fram Ultra Full Synthetic Filter that actually has pretty good reviews online. So what I'm going to do is cut my k and filter apart and compare it to a brand new out-of-the-box uh, Fram filter. I bought two of them, one to put on the car, one to uh, test. And we'll take a look and see what's inside and how it really compares construction-wise. I imagine they're going to be pretty similar. The price of the Fram was almost 10 bucks. The premium k and run about anywhere from 9 to 15 bucks. And uh, everybody on Amazon and other sites have been saying, giving it really good reviews and saying that the Micron uh, filtering is comparable to like Mobile One and other top brands. So we shall see. I wouldn't normally put frame on my car, especially back when I had a 2003 Civic Si hatchback and they had abysmal filtering. <laughs> but um, even back then, I never had engine failure or anything. But I, I quickly switched back to Mobile One and uh, other I guess, set brands that did very well in, in shootout tests. So We'll see how that goes, but that'll be the video I do this weekend. Show a bit of how I organize my trunk, turn signals, reverse camera. So look forward to that. I'm, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it uploaded this weekend. It might be sometime next week, but I'm going to try to get this video uploaded tonight so you guys know what to expect. So, do a run back to work and see if anything interesting happens on the way. And I cannot wait for these stock tires to wear out so I can replace them with something decent. I think I'm going to go with the same Bridgestone Potenza as I had on the STI. I should have brought the set that I had, but one of the tires on the STI had a hole in it, had a screw go through it, so I ended up plugging it. I've got that set still sitting back in Ohio in my dad's garage. But um, I was kind of on the fence. It was a fairly new set. It had maybe five to 10,000 miles on the set. So I really didn't want to just get rid of them. But at the same time, I've never driven on a car tire that's been plugged. So one of those better safe than sorry situations, but I plugged the hell out of it. I used the uh, the rubber type plug that you push through and then pull back and then cut it off. With the, uh, the rubber cement type glue <clears throat> that you coat it with. And on top of that, I put a patch on the back side and, and glued that down. So theoretically it should be fine, but I drive kind of aggressively at times. And uh, I'd rather not take any more risks than I have to. Maybe if my dad brings the set out, I could take another look at those tires and see if they're worth salvaging. Three of the tires were good, but it's like, okay, you got three tires now. <laughs> and they don't make that model anymore. So what are you supposed to do with that? have a matched set, so it's not like I could really use them for spares. Yeah. The shitty thing is they're a $600 set of tires. So, it's not like motorcycle tires where if one goes out, it's not, if one get a, gets a hole in it, it's not that big a deal. I mean, you're out maybe a hundred bucks for the front my Diablo, it's nice because the rear is only 180 bucks. Whereas some of the 190s will run up over $200. So, in Ducati's defense, working out that deal with Pirelli and getting the prices to be right around the 180 zone is actually pretty damn good. It's like $300 a set to put tires on the Diablo. As long as you shop around. I mean, if you really wanted to pay MSRP at a dealership, I've heard of guys <laughs> in the UK and Australia just getting totally fleeced for what would amount to 
five to six hundred American dollars. It's it's just insane. No amount of I mean, yeah, they're a pain in the ass to change, as you can see from my video, but not <laughs> not three hundred dollars labor pain in the ass. I mean, it's maybe an hour to change the set, especially if you've got a professional uh, tire changer that's autom that's mechanical, not. Uh, not manual, where you have to use a bar and everything, and walk it around. Oh, I miss my STI and all-wheel drive. I'm so tempted to get a new STI and trade this car if they make a hatchback. Because while I hated the front end of the previous generation, because I thought it looked like a Toyota uh, Corolla, really ho-hum styling, the back half of it has gradually grown on me, and even the front end doesn't look too terrible, but now that the, uh, the latest model has kind of gone back to, what's going on with this? It's green, but it's obviously an exit. But now that they've gone back to that really aggressive 2005 style front end, really like the look of that car, and now that I've got a kid, it makes more sense to have a four-door. Of course, I bought this, like, <laughs> six months before we decided we were going to start trying to have a baby. Got to get a house first. That's the thing. Got to prioritize the budget. I'm going to park next to my friend Anthony's car. He's got a BRZ as well. We've got twin twins. Two DGM BRZs. It is really nice having the backup camera. But you get really nice up and close to walls and stuff. So, yeah. I also got a different um, pump for pulling oil out of the sump. And I'm going to link... When I do this next oil change, I'm going to link a uh, professional Mercedes-Benz mechanics video showing that using the oil dipstick filler location to drain the oil out of your oil pan is frequently better than using the drain plug because some oil pans have inset areas that you cannot get at the oil, and you'll actually have like half a pint like eight fluid ounces or more of oil, just filthy oil sitting at the bottom of your oil pan in those little sunken down areas um, that the oil plug won't get at. You would have to drop the oil pan to actually drain that out. So there is a reason to use the dipstick location to suck the oil out rather than just rely on the, uh, the drain plug. So that's cool. I'll link that video. I'll show the new pump that I've got. It's all steel, and it should do a better job than that Mighty Vac I had. The Mighty Vac I used um, to drain gasoline out of a motorcycle gas tank. Really old gas, like five-year-old gas. And it sat with the gas in it, and it destroyed the seals. And it completely ruined that pump. So I would have had to go in and completely disassemble it, replace all the seals. And at that point, I just decided I'd buy a new one. And this one's only 50 bucks. Whereas the Mighty Vac is twice that. So, should be an interesting video. And we'll compare Fram and do a bunch of BRZ stuff this weekend. So, look forward to that this coming weekend to all through next week. I'll probably have enough footage to cover the entire week with uh, BRZ stuff. So, cool. I'll see you guys this weekend.